In this lesson, we're describing parts of parts. This goes with CPM, Chapter 5, Section 1.2. And we're continuing to look at multiplying fractions. We're still not getting into the standard algorithm yet. Continuing to look at representations like we did yesterday. If we wanted to represent the fraction 1 third, we could use any of these following figures or diagrams in order to represent that. We could draw two vertical lines within the rectangle and consider each section to be one third. If we use that in conjunction with the strategy that we talked about in the last lesson, we would actually call that an area model. We would not call it a rectangle, um, and we'll get into that a little bit later. You can use the circle and just divide that into thirds, or you can use something like a number line, and each section represents one third. Now, a common mistake that you want to be careful of is if you're using a rectangle, or what we'll call, refer to as the area model, frequently students will draw this to represent fourths, right? because we have one rectangle and each section is one fourth. And that's great, but that doesn't work with what we're doing. Because if you remember yesterday, what this really is representing is halves, where if we're going to be using the area model to solve multiplication problems, we really want to be doing the lines in the same direction. And that'll make more sense as we go through different strategies or not necessarily strategies, but more complex problems, where you might have something like one-fourth of one-half, and then you're able to label your x and y axis differently. But we'll get more into that as we go forward in other lessons. Using that, we could look at this figure and determine a fraction that this represents. In this case, we're going to say that there are six total circles, and five of them are pink. You could say that one-sixth is white, but in this case we're looking at what is shaded. We could take this one step farther, and if I give you step one and step two, we're able to take the figure and turn it into an expression. And then we're able to solve that expression. For example, let's look at this next part. If I said that this here on the left is step one, and this part on the right is step two, we're able to look at it and put together an expression. Okay, so we're starting on the left, and we already determined that this part is five-sixths. But what are we doing here? Okay, when we look at the circles, we can see that what we have, each circle is split into thirds. And then what I really have here is I'm taking one-third of those five-sixths. And you can remember from yesterday's lesson that one-third of, of means multiply five-sixths. So really what we're saying is one-third times five-sixths. And then we're able to solve it. If I count the shaded parts, I have one, two, three, four, five parts that are blue. And if I have the total number of thirds from every circle, I have 18 thirds because I'm getting three from this circle and three from this circle, three from every circle. Even though it doesn't show three in this white circle, it is still thirds. In this case, your numerator is the total shaded part that's blue, and your denominator is the total number of thirds in the entire figure, and you have one figure. And this is where you might get confused opposed to the area model that we talked about in the last lesson, because remember that we only had one hole. Here we still have one hole, but we're using multiple figures to represent that one hole. Um, if you looked at this as a pizza, you could say, I have six pizzas, or had six pizzas, because I'm not including this last one here, but I have one total amount of pizza. Using that information, solve this problem. Use a diagram to solve one-fifth of one-third. And remember, we're not using the standard algorithm yet. Right now, I want you to choose a diagram. Think about the three diagrams that I showed you at the beginning of the video. You're able to go back and look at that. Which one is going to most efficiently solve this problem? 
I'll show you how I'll do it in a moment. Go ahead, pause the video and solve this on your own. Okay, I used an area model to solve this problem. I started with my rectangle, divided it into thirds vertically and into fifths horizontally, and then I shaded in my fifths and I shaded in my thirds. And when you look at it, you can see that I have only one section that has both of those numbers in it. So my numerator is going to be one, and there are 15 total pieces in this hole. So I'm going to have 15 as my numerator. So I can say that one-fifth of one-third is one-fifteenth. Now the reason I decided to use an area model instead of the circle is because when I get into one-fifth and one-third, I could draw more and more circles. It's going to be a little bit more work, um, but it is still possible. And personally, I don't, I'm not a big fan of the number lines, but if that's easier for you, you can do that. Okay. I want to introduce different strategies, and then you're able to pick and choose what works best for you. Part of this is to introduce a strategy that you're able to use. Starting in the next lesson, we're going to try to start working away from the different diagrams, but they're a great way for you to check your work as you're solving different problems. And again, with this diagram, as with many of them, you'll notice it's just a quick sketch. It is not a detailed drawing. It's not drawn to scale, but it's drawn in such a way that I understand the representations that I'm trying to make. 